Good. Now, if you remember last time, we were talking about how to make this world a perfect place. That's what God wanted. He made the world in such a way. When he made the world, the world was perfect. What do you mean perfect? It was like a puzzle that all the pieces were there. And the picture was like on the cover of the puzzle. You know? So true, there was a lot of pieces. Let's say it was a puzzle that had a, a a million pieces in it, a million piece puzzle, but all the pieces were there. All the, the picture was there. And then Adam, when he sinned, so he added another billion pieces to the puzzle, which have nothing to do with the puzzle. So now we have to, in addition to putting the puzzle together, the pieces that belong there, we have to also avoid the pieces that aren't there. And that's the whole idea of the Torah and the commandments. The first person to really realize this <clears throat> was Abraham. After Adam sinned, so he confused the world. And in ensuing generations, the world became more and more and more confused. You couldn't see any order. You couldn't see any purpose. You couldn't see the, the there was a, a picture there. <clears throat> In other words, the, the artist that made the original picture that we cut up to make the puzzle, it didn't seem that there was one. And the language of Kabbalah says that the Shekhinah disappeared from the world. The world seemed to be just this jumble of facts and, <coughs> and uh, uh, creations of things that have no real connection one to the other. And the job of the Jews was supposed to be, Abraham was supposed, uh, Adam was supposed to be a Jew, was supposed to put it together. But when he didn't, so generation after generation, they sinned and they drove God's prayer. They added more and more confusion to the world until came along Abraham. And Abraham decided he is going to put order into the world. He's going to avoid the bad things. He's going to use the good things for what God wants. And God, and he said, I am loyal only to you, God. I'm going to be loyal, loyalty to the creator of the universe. We're going to get this thing fixed up. And it says that Abraham succeeded in reversing the process, that God's presence came down from the seventh level of concealment to the sixth level. And then Yitzchak brought it from the sixth to the fifth, all because of their devotion and self-sacrifice to the creator of the world and their belief that there's a purpose for the creation. The creation is the most important thing. And they, called, they didn't care about heaven. They didn't care about hell. They, they were not not interested in themselves at all, only in doing what the creator wants. Until finally Moshe, he brought the God's presence down into the physical world, into the tabernacle that the, 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 was called the temple, the mikdash. And after Moshe brought it down into the world, <clears throat> so it stayed in the world, but now each one of us is a holy temple. So each one of us has to individually do this work of making ourselves into a holy temple, continuing the work that Abraham did, Yitzhak Yaakov, this work of self-sacrifice. In order to do this now, it requires us to be soldiers. A soldier, the main thing of a soldier is that he has self-sacrifice. And that's what the Jews are called, Siva Osashem. They're called the armies of God, the soldiers of God. That's what soldiers are. And the whole thing of a soldier is, is to win the battle. <clears throat> the, the, is to win the battle. But he's directed, he doesn't, a soldier doesn't necessarily see the big picture. The king sees the big picture. The king, he's the general, he's the commander in chief of the army. He sees the big picture. <clears throat> and the soldiers are loyal to the king. <clears throat> and the king is willing to open up even his deepest storehouses for victory. Because now we're on a the we're, we're on a battle. The battle is between order and disorder, between life and death, between 
creation and destruction. <clears throat> and anyone who um, is not really part of the battle, as he's part of the destruction. And we're not talking about punishing people, or we're not talking about <clears throat> the, 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 the destroying people or destroying anything. <clears throat> we're talking about making order. Like I said, that there's billions and billions of pieces that have to be ignored. <clears throat> and if you want to, you can say that the real big battle now is education. The battle is education. Battle against ignorance. Battle against indifference. Battle against meaninglessness. <clears throat> That's the battle. That's why Hasidut is here. That's why the Torah was put into the world, to educate the world. That's why the Torah is... That's so what the Jewish people are here. The Jewish people are called Mamlechas Kohanim, the Goy Kadosh. The Jews are here because they're supposed to be the nation of priests to show the world that God is creating them, put order into the world that every human being feels important. In the eyes of God, he's being created. Every person has a purpose. It says <clears throat> this, but the power to do this is only in the hands of the Jews to educate the world. And it's a tremendous difficult battle. <clears throat> because the, the world does not want to be educated in any way. <clears throat> but to unify the Jewish people, the Jewish people, their job is to unify the whole world with the truth. And in order to do this, it's a very difficult process, <clears throat> a very, very difficult process. So it requires self-sacrifice. So here we go. In order to do this, though, the king helps the soldiers. The king gives from the deep storehouses, opens up his storehouses and gives the his hidden treasures from the, all the generations. This is a battle of, <clears throat> of existence. So let's, I don't remember where we were last time, but let's have a mom sheikh lobeir. So it continues explaining the sheikh was in a milchama of war to Netzach. It says even God's name is Tzvaos. God's name, one of God's name is Tzvaos. We don't even say it. We say it sometimes Tzvaos. One of God's name. So God, by him, he has this name of Tzvaos. And this name is in order to help the Tzvaos, the armies of God in the world. And that's to make victory. That's the idea of Netzach. Netzach means victory. Netzach also means eternal. But Netzach means victory. So Sivas and Muhammad, the whole reason of the war is in order <clears throat> to defeat the enemy. Maybe do Melazer, both and Hanagas and Melech, how a king works with the army at the time of the war. So again, the Jewish people are God's army, and the goal is to educate the world <clears throat> to what God really is. And in order to do this, is a tremendously difficult battle. There's all this idolatry and all these other fakers and <clears throat> pretenders. Shav Mizeh, Muvan, also, Benogea, Lahan Hagas, Akodesh Baruchu, Melech Elyon, the upper king, Shanil Chamba Rashaim, the God, it's also, <clears throat> it says he fights when God fights with the sinners. When God fights with the sinners, then his name is Tzavaos, Tzavakos. Shabishvil Nitzuach, in order to win this battle, Hari Mebazbez calls Gulos Otsros. He's willing to, how do you say, be, to, to, to spend without calculation to hone Yakar Shenesaf, <clears throat> the treasure houses, which have been gathered up for many, many years, Midor Achardor, generation after generation. We're in the middle of a battle, a huge war. The war has been going on for 2,000 years since the temple has been destroyed. Maybe we can say 4,000 years. Abraham was called Abraham Ivri. Ivri means the other side. It says the whole world was on one side and Abraham was on the other side. It's a tremendous battle that we're in. And, and the battle also has to be, the main battle that's fighting is within ourselves. <clears throat> Each person on his own <clears throat> has to over, because what happens when a person <clears throat> is ignorant about what God is, so he doesn't fight he doesn't defy his own nature. 
nature itself has a, a life in itself. The world has a life in itself. The world calls to us. It tempts us, it angers us, it depresses us. The world itself <clears throat> can be our worst enemy. On the other hand, the world itself is the, the biggest treasure. It's the goal. <clears throat> but first of all, we have to fight this battle internally. Like there was a person in Kfar Chabad, I told you about this, that he used to get along, like Chabad is not in, in politics. So, but on the other hand, we need money from the government <clears throat> if, where, where we, wherever we can to get it in a just way. And there was one person that <clears throat> he used to get along with all of the ministers of the government, even those people that were anti-religious, which is not missing, a lot, it's not lacking. A lot of that are anti-religious and that they're anti-Chabad and that they're and, and he used to get along with everybody. And they asked him, how do you get along with everyone? And he said, when there's a, when there's a war inside, then there's peace outside. If you fight inside your battle and fight against yourself, then there can be peace outside. Then it's easy to educate people, to be a good example, to make an impression that God is good, that God is true, the Torah is right. In order to win this battle, though, the king helps us. And he opens up hidden treasure houses. Asher me'olam lo yishtamesh b'hem l'shum davar that were never used for anything, but kamus v'chasum, and they are hidden and sealed up me'ayin kal roa that no one sees them. Hine be'es nitzuach ha'melchama, in order to win the battle, whom abazbez kal otzros, he spends everything without making any calculations. He spends all of the treasures. Be'es melchama at the time of the war, potchim at the otzros, he opens up the hidden treasure houses, the notnim otam, the king gives them ali desarium of pekidim by means of the officers shein pekidi achayel, which these are the officers of the army, but mainly bishvil anche achayel, the foot soldiers. Al derech says similarly. So God helps us. You decide to fight this battle inside of yourself, then God helps you. Al derech says moving benogel it's always Hashem. It's understood in the battle of Hashem. The armies of God, each and every one of the Jews, God gives to them otros, the otros, the, the hidden treasures, in order to win the battle. In order that each person will fight these battles of God and be victorious. Lasot lo, what's the what is the goal? Lasot lo dira betachtoni to make God a dwelling place in the physical world. But usually that's what battles are. Usually battles are for land, conquering another person's land. Usually that's the way it is, right? The way you conquer the enemy is by foot soldiers. You can bomb the enemy and you can do whatever you want to the enemy. But usually, the only way to really defeat the enemy usually is by foot soldiers, <clears throat> or to show that you're ready to go in with foot soldiers. <clears throat> and the, the point of the battle is, I mean, if you want to conquer the land, <clears throat> truly you want to conquer the land, then you have to have foot soldiers to go in and conquer the land. You can't just bomb, like in, in, in World War II, so they bombed Japan so that the Japan would stop being belligerent. America didn't want to conquer Japan, take over Right, take over the land, make the people slaves, just that they would stop being belligerent. That was supposed to be the idea. So therefore, they didn't need so much the foot soldiers. But on the other hand, the Japanese knew that if they didn't give in, then there was more bombs and they were willing to send in foot soldiers that would be true. Oh, Yochanan, Shalom, Yochanan, welcome. We're learning the mimer. Bati Lagani, the mimer that the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe said, gave out to be learned. And it ended up, he passed away on that day. And the Mimer has 20 paragraphs. And every year the Lubavitcher Rebbe <clears throat> would um, learn, would teach one of these paragraphs with his own explanations. And this year it comes out that we're explaining the 11th paragraph, which is already explained twice. And this, it was explained also in the year 1961, the Rebbe took over in 1951. So in 1961, he got up to the 11th chapter. And in 1981, again, 
And so we're learning the Mimer that the Rebbe said in 1981, Tavshin Mem Aleph. The Mimer is talking about how the Jewish people are called the armies of God. And that the Jewish people, their job, their, their goal is, is to conquer the world, to make the world a place where everyone sees that there's a creator and that God is creating them. And that everyone is important and everyone has tremendous potential. But it's a battle to do this. And therefore it requires a war. The war has to be fought within each and every one of us. First of all, that we're actually convinced that there's a God, a creator, and that the creator God is, wants us to live according to the Torah and use the world according to the Torah. It's a tremendous battle. In order to win this battle, it says that God, who is the king, he opens up the treasure houses. Poter Venoten, he gives the, the, the treasure houses in order that they should win the battle today in order that each and every one should fight the battle of God and succeed. So that basically it says about Mashiach, that the Mashiach will fight the battles of God. Mashiach will fight the battles of God. It doesn't mean that he's going to have a sword or a, a gun or something and he's going to, doesn't necessarily mean that. True that King David did have a, a, a gun and a sword and the things he did fight, but that's, he just set the way. The main battle of King David <clears throat> The main battle of King David was education, to educate the world. David was a man of Torah. It says Yoav ben Suriya was his sar of the, the, the general of war. He would actually make physical war. But David Melech's main thing was education. And his enemies were people who simply couldn't, they weren't, they couldn't educate their own selves. They knew the Torah, but they didn't want to fight against their own selfish impulses. Doag, Achitofel, eventually Yoav, the, the, <clears throat> the enemies of King David, Absalom, so and so, and David Amelo had everybody in the kingdom hated him, King David. <clears throat> in order that each person will fight the battles of battles of God. That's the whole idea. Well, God put us into this world in order <clears throat> to conquer the world. God put us as man, first man in the world. The little Man was put into the world in order to conquer the world, so to speak, that the world should be subservient to the creator, that the world should go according to the manufacturer's instructions. But it all depends on us. Lasot lo to make for God a dear a dwelling place in the world. Ach lechior in a movement, but it's not understood. The king, it says, what? That he opens up the treasure houses to give to the army to win. Who is the army? Us. Who is the enemy? The enemy is ignorance. The enemy are those people that don't want to do what God wants because either they're not educated or because they cling to their ignorance. They don't want to be educated. <clears throat> In order to win this battle, <clears throat> so Hashem, God, opens up his treasure houses, just like a king opens up his treasure houses to win. If At first, though, it's not understood. If this is really such a tremendous, pre precious treasures, that he never used them, the Shum Dabar, for anything. A <clears> few <throat> even one coin. Bavadai, Lo, Bof, and Shabizbo, certainly he doesn't never opened up these treasures in order to just scatter them, all these riches. Ukamus, Vachasum, Ba'ain, call that these were concealed and hidden from everyone. If so, Mawatam, why is it all of a sudden that a king, in order to win a battle, and even if this is not a battle of existence, someone is attacking him to make up an offensive battle, Harihuma Bazbez Kala Otsros, he spends all of his tre treasures. I mean, listen, he, he, Chabad has made an offensive battle against the world. If Chabad wanted to, right, they could just make Chabad, they could have their own cities and just keep to themselves and <clears throat> grow and strengthen themselves, right? And strengthen the families <clears throat> and learn Torah. And whoever wanted to come, like Noah's Ark, whoever wants to come in can come in. But no, <clears throat> it says that the, the Melech Mashiach is going to fight battles of God. Who is he going to fight? He's not going to fight against the anti-Semites. He's going to fight against ignorance. And ignorance is the whole world is ignorance. The whole world is a big lie. As long as the world is not used for what Hashem wants, every detail, every moment, then it's a big lie. The whole world is a big lie. 
<clears throat> it's like a person saying that he wants to be healthy, but just once a, once a year he injects some poison into himself, right? Some arsenic or something like that. Once a little bit, no big deal. It's, it's unhealthy. The, 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 the same thing. As long as every moment and every place in this world is not filled with it, with the awareness that there's a creator and that he wants for our good that we should do what he wants, then the world is a big lie. It's it's a it's killing itself. In order, therefore, we're, we're making an offensive battle. And in order for the king to win this offensive battle to conquer others, he's willing to open up all of the storehouses, all of the deep treasures that have been hidden for all of the generations for the previous kings that didn't want to make such a battle. All of a sudden, he opens up to the, these, these treasure houses. The Alzem, Amshich Leboyer. Why is that's our generation? And this is continuing to say, because this whole idea of victory, it's inside of the essence of the soul. From any of the other personality traits of the soul. Higher than will, higher than pleasure. We'll see, higher than life itself. Hainu. This desire of the king <clears throat> to rule is higher than anything else. We see that there were kings in the past. We're talking about bad kings, but they ruled the whole world, right? With the Alexander, this Rome, some, according to some opinions, Paro, they conquered the whole world. Why? Why did they have to conquer the whole world? They conquered countries that didn't pose any danger to them. Right? Why did they want to do a thing like that? We saw evil people just in the, <clears throat> in the, the 70 years ago, right? Their whole idea was just to make a war to conquer. Why did they want to do such a thing like that? It's because victory is in the essence of the soul. And victory can be a very, very good thing. Like I said, God made the world. He put man in it. And he said, and you, to take the world of Akif Shua and to, and to conquer the world. <clears throat> Nature by itself demands order. Like we said, a puzzle has to be put together. God made the world perfect. All the pieces of the puzzle were there. Adam just had to put them all together. But by sinning, he added another few billion pieces to the puzzle that are totally unnecessary, more confusion. <coughs> and that's the battle is to put all this together. Look, and therefore, call it Oneg. <coughs> therefore, the king, the greatest pleasures of the king, the Niflin wondrous pleasures, Shiyesh Bisgulos Malchuso, that are in his treasure house, the Osros Yakaro, and his precious treasures, his riches, Lohe and Enum Abaz Bezotam, the Enum Mishtamish Bam Kalal, right? He has like the precious crown that was used by the first king. He has the, the, the magical scepter which was used by the first, what is queen, right? He never touches them because it's so precious. Ainotophis, but when it comes to winning a battle, victory, Ainotophis Makom Kalal He's willing to open up all of the storehouses and risk everything in order to be victorious. <coughs> in order to win this battle, he, he gives out all of his storehouses. Yatirim is one even more. Shagam Chayev Mashlich Melch Meneged. That also the king throws his life away. Chuli. Vacholza Umaylus Inyan and Netzach. Nowadays it's a little bit hard for us to understand this in a good way. Nowadays, all of usually the, the people who want to conquer, they're the aggressors. They're evil. They're willing to kill innocent people for no reason to attack and to destroy, <clears throat> conquering and, 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 and wrecking things, usually conquering and victory in our minds <clears throat> is not a good thing. That's one of the reasons why the world is in the way it is. And that's typically the, the philosophy of the left, of the left. There should be peace, there should be this, there should be this, right? In order to have peace, they're, they're willing to kill people, anybody that the, that's in the, in the way of their peace and in the way of the shalom. But generally speaking, not to defy nature. That's a very terrible problem nowadays, not to defy nature. <clears throat> whatever you want, whatever, <clears throat> right? They have the, there's no, now there's a big thing. What, 
gender, whatever gender you want, that's what you want. That's what you feel. You feel you're a man, you're a man. You feel you're a woman, you, whatever you feel. And that's what it is. You feel there shouldn't be any boundaries. There shouldn't be any walls. There shouldn't be any, any limitations. Everyone should just do what they want to. Right? Let everything flow. This is a very, this is the enemy. This is a, this is a terrible enemy. No definition, no identity. We're all one. We're all this. Let everything flow. There's not going to be any many Frenchmen and never this, and no, no nationalities, no differences, right? Just let everybody just, no family, <clears throat> any more family. You don't want to have any children, there won't be children. So just the easiest way. This is a very big problem. This is a, this is a big enemy. <clears throat> and usually the people that hold this, they're willing to fight, they're willing to kill in order to keep their, their, uh, their so-called freedom. <clears throat> victory is a necessary thing, victory, victory, because there is such a thing as victory, netzach, nitzachon, for the side of good. And when a person makes his mind up that any place where the creator is not revealed, that must be fixed up. That means declaring war. And first of all, a person finds out that the main enemy that we have is ourselves. A person himself just wants to go according to his nature. He doesn't want to give too much charity or spend too much time praying or too much time giving learning Torah or just, just to be normal, you know, Facebook and just flow with it. Life is but a dream. There has to be this battle that a person makes to, to defy nature. <clears throat> this is the thing of victory in its source. And therefore, Megiyah, it's a melech. Therefore, the king, the king comes, but Omik, but Tokiv Yoter, and he calls Sharin Yani a Malucha Vimchal. Therefore, the king, if the king really cares, this is the essence. Listen, it, it, this is a big problem. I mean, I, I learned a little bit of like I say, psych, psychiatry, psychology. I learned very extensively a lot of the things of Professor Viktor Frankl. Professor Viktor Frankl, the, the Lubavitcher Rebbe held from him very much. And his thing was war. His thing was defiance. His thing was really defiance. That, that you have to, life has to have tension all the time between what is and what's supposed to be. You always have to feel the challenge of life. And all those before him, <clears throat> Freud, Adler, all those people, their goal was what he calls homeostasis. The goal is you shouldn't have any problems. Do, do away with your problems. No neurosis, no psychosis, no hangups, no difficulties. Just, you know, just be calm. Just, well, it's impossible. It's this goal of just being calm, this is what breeds, brings sickness. A people, person feels he's so desirous of not having any challenges and not having any difficulties and not making any war and not being victorious that life just conquers him. And there, that's the source of all these neurosis and psychosis and meaningless and, and feel being in limbo and so there must this idea of nitzachon comes from the essence of the soul. It's necessary for health, for psychological health, for emotional health. There has to be a person has to fight a battle against himself. He has to fight a battle against his own complacency and his own indifference and coldness. That's the battle. <clears throat> and here, that's why the Torah was put into the world to give us uh, a goal. Namely, to conquer the world, to conquer the world, to make the show the world that the world is a creation, and that everyone is being created by the Creator, but everyone has responsibility. And the responsibility is is to change the world, to improve the world. And this is a big challenge. We have to be victorious. <clears throat> so that's our job. But it's not understood. Ma, that's why it says the Mashiach, Mashiach will fight the battles of Hashem and will succeed. What is this idea of how does it how does this relate to God? It's a melech malchi amlochim akodesh burhu by Hashem. One second, God can do whatever He wants to. <clears throat> God hasn't got any enemies, enemies of God. God can just wipe them out in a second. What's the problem? Just stop creating them. Here we see this week's Torah portion. Okay, right? God sends ten plagues to the Egyptians. Right? Instead of knocking them out in the first round, He just sort of you know plays with them a little bit and lets them get up the second round he gives them an uppercut and lets them you know stand up at the count of eight <clears throat> you know and then the next round he encourages them right to, to 
to, to, to get up again. God can do whatever he wants to. Who, how can there be an enemy of God? What does this mean? Who says to God what to do? What place is there by God things that are not good? What does it mean? God, it makes a difference to God if you eat kosher, you don't eat kosher. If you be act natural, you fight. What difference does it make to God? The answer is like this Kafisha Mabur, like it explains the Admo Marash, the fourth Rabbi of Chabad, Rabbi Shmuel, in the Mimer, see, Titkas Pizrono, in Tafresh Chaf Zion, 1867. It's the fourth Rabbi of Chabad. Look, and therefore it says, Gam Netzach Yisrael, it says it by King David, Netzach Yisrael, Shanitzachon Uli Yisrael. That the Jewish people, they're the ones that have to fight the battle. <clears throat> Even though, that by God, it is not relevant, any sort of victory. Even that there's necessary for the Jewish people, because the Jews have to fix the world up. Therefore, by God, also the same thing. He's the king. There's the Netzach Yisrael lo Yishakir. Therefore, the victory of the Jews cannot, God cannot change his mind. He cannot bear falsehood. It's eternal by God, the same battle as the Jews have. The Inyan Bezeh, what does it mean? The Zeh, the Hine, behold, Im Yoshe Yisrael, even though they're the Jewish people. And Maimar Matzev, the Edma Le'Ilyan, because the Jewish people are similar to God, the Jewish people, they do the Torah and the commandments. The Torah and the commandments, the commandments are 613 positive commandments, 613, 613 commandments, 248 positive commandments. That corresponds to the 248 limbs and organs of the body. And the 365 negative commandments, that corresponds to the blood vessels. So if so, when the Jews have the Torah, they are in the image of God. It's a whole new, different dimension. Everyone is in the image of God. But when the Jews do the Torah, it's a totally different dimension of being in the image of God. So therefore, the Jews are in the image of God. But the Jews are the image of God below. That's why the King Solomon says, Taimoti, the Jewish people are God's twins. Shezeu, Kalala, Sinyan, Yeridas, and Hashemah. That's the whole idea of why the soul comes back down into the world. Because <clears throat> God put me in a dark place. The soul puts the soul in a dark place. Why are we down here in the world? That the godly soul is put into the world in order to do its work with the animal soul. The animal soul is real. The animal soul is us. The godly soul only wants to do what God wants. It's basking in the oneness of God, has no desire to come into the world and to deal with worldly things, but God does want it to come down. If the godly soul is put into the world, and the world is much more alive and real than you could possibly imagine. When the godly soul is put into the animal soul, <clears throat> then suddenly the animal, animal soul is the natural soul. And suddenly, the, and it's inside of a body, suddenly all of a sudden it has a new identity. <coughs> the oven, the <coughs> acharecha It says that by means, the soul, the godly soul, is put into the body and the animal soul in order to convince the animal soul to also run after God. Acharecha nerutza, we will run. The godly soul and the animal soul. <clears throat> that both should want to do what the Creator wants. Lashon Rabin, the Takenet Olam to fix up this physical world, Agashmi Bachumi, which is physical and mundane, like it says in the Tanya. It's brought from Eitz Chaim, the book of Eitz Chaim, the Neshama, the soul itself. Einat Suricha Tikun Kolal doesn't have to be fixed up at all. Why does God put the soul into the world? He puts the soul into the world in order to fight this battle. <clears throat> the world, God put the soul into the world in order to fix it up. 
Now, when it, this is talking about the non-Jews also, but the non-Jews have a different job than the Jews. The non-Jews are in the world in order to make the world an orderly place, a good place, even a blessed place. <clears throat> the Jews are here to make the world a holy place, to reveal God, the creator, in every detail of the world, to put the puzzle together. To make God revealed here in this physical world. The whole world should be like the Holy of Holies was in the Holy Temple. <clears throat> what was in the Holy of Holies in the Holy Temple? The Holy, the essence, revelation of the essence of God. What was there? Just one big bright light to flesh? No. There was a, an ark. And <clears throat> the ark had to be exact measurements. And inside of the ark was the tablets that God gave. And the tablets were also very exact. And there was written on them all the Ten Commandments. It has to be written exactly. And it was miraculous. But it was all there was physicality there. <clears throat> When the essence of God is revealed in the world, the world remains the way it is. Exactly the opposite. The world is the way it was supposed to be in the beginning. That every second is a miracle. Every single a creation, every single detail of the world is a wonder. And the biggest wonder of all is us. <clears throat> we have free will. We can do what God wants. Cave and Shetzirich and Lipol Birur because we have to refine the physical world <clears throat> the alcohol upon him, <clears throat> the, the mundane world, mundane world is that it pulls us down. Alcohol upon him, at least, gosh, me, the physical world. In order to fix up the world, you have to have a war, a battle. And like I said, the battle starts inside of us. We pull the escafia. Escafia means forcing yourself, forcing yourself to do good forcing yourself to avoid bad. <clears throat> the world, nature, is so real that it makes you forget that we're here to fix it up. We're here to conquer it. <clears throat> Rather, what happens is that the world conquers us. Exactly the opposite of what's supposed to be. <clears throat> Therefore, by means of us conquering ourselves, all you days is talik yichur the kodesh bruchu. We have that's removing. There is re, there is revealed the glory of Hashem in the whole world. The whole world becomes suddenly a big miracle, a big revelation of God. Everything, every bug, every tree, every breeze, all you days by means of this yavoga meskafia chashucha that will be transformed darkness to light. Muriel, Lamiska, and bitterness to sweetness. <clears throat> Instead of this world being such a dark, bitter, frustrating place, it'll become light and sweetness. Eventually, there won't even be any death. That's the way it was before Adam ate from the tree. <clears throat> there won't be any death. We'll realize that every single instance is just an amazing, godly miracle. And where God is, there can't be any death. God is the essence of life. Lasot Meshekar to make from the lie of the world, Kerish, a board. A Kerish means one of the boards, one of the <clears throat> one of the pieces of wood of the walls of the tabernacle, Kerish Amishkan. From Sheker, you just rearrange the letters, right? You don't have to get rid of anything. You just have to add a new order. You make it into Kerish, one of the boards of the temple, tabernacle. The lasot mikalolos in Yanolam that makes for the whole world a dwelling for God. The whole world becomes like a big holy temple. Happy. That's the whole idea of the victory of the war. For this, Megalim at the Otsros, God is willing to open up all of his treasures. And what are the treasures in this case? It's the ideas of Hasidut. And the ideas of Hasidut, the ideas of Kabbalah, how they're explained in Hasidut. These things were hidden for generations and generations. And the Rebbe's of Chabad, beginning with the Baal Shem Tov, but especially the first Rebbe of Chabad, they revealed these deep secrets of the king of creation to us in a way that we can use them. They're, they're used. This is an example. <clears throat> so every single moment of our lives can become this battle between meaninglessness and meaningless. <clears throat> between meaninglessness and meaning. Meaning. <laughs> that everything becomes meaningful be between mundane and holy 
<clears throat> between life and death, between lies and truth, every single instant. In other words, are we really doing, thinking, saying, feeling, <clears throat> understanding as much as we can about the Creator? Of course, it's impossible to understand the Creator totally, but a little bit we can. And even if we don't understand anything, we can do what the Creator wants. And we can avoid what the Creator doesn't want. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't be, be depressed, don't run after your desires, <clears throat> be considerate, be brave, <clears throat> to live according to the Torah, and not just the seven Noahic commandments. In order to do that, though, it requires a battle, it requires an internal battle, and it requires an out <clears throat> outer battle not to be ashamed. <clears throat> to have an influence on others and not to be lazy to have an influence on ourselves. But God helps. He opens up all the treasure houses in order to assure our victory as we will continue, God willing, tomorrow.